process optimizers, and welcome back to Munich, Germany. We are here halfway through day two of Salonis' Telesphere. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by Rob Streche. We are just rocking the morning. I guess we're already into the afternoon now. Yeah, it's, it's been great. I think the, the energy has been fantastic. The conversations continue to really drive around why process optimization is just so key and why you can't really do it without process intelligence as well. And yeah, and you know, speaking of intelligence, we've had so many intelligent guests, and we've got one sitting here with us right now. Colby, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us. Thank you so much for calling me here. Yes, no, it's, it's our pleasure to get to learn from you. You are at Reckitt, and my understanding is People may not know of Racket, but they certainly know of your many products. So tell us, tell us what y'all do. So uh, first of all, about Racket. So we are 200 old year heritage, uh, working in the CPG industry, works in three different uh, categories: health, hygiene, and home, and and nutrition. So we've been owner, proud owner of our iconic brands like Lysol, Dettol, Dorex. Uh, Neurofin, Mucinex, you know, you name it, and it's uh, it's all over. The Literally, place. every person in here yeah. has and more products yeah. either in their bag or on their shelf. I was going to say Mucinex is one of my favorite things. I have it in my bag when I travel all the time. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it, it is a lifesaver. <laughs> it is, it is especially, a life especially in, in these yeah. in these times. You've also got forty thousand people all over the world working with you all. What's your role specifically at Rackets? So I, I take care of uh, the intelligent automation uh, for the group. So I, for, for which means uh, globally how we drive the efficiency and effectiveness across these processes. That's my role for, for the racket. And I've been with them for the last 14 years. So how, how did you get started with Salonis and what process did you really focus in on? And Because I, I think, again, CPG, so many brands, there's so many places you could have started with this and doing the process mining and getting to process management and process intelligence. Yeah. We have a long history with Salonis. Um, I think it has evolved over time and so is the product. So is the intelligence behind it, to be honest. So when we started was uh, long back, we started with our internal control perspective where we wanted to know what's happening. We didn't, we were blinded. Uh, of course, the systems we, we, we have, but how you look at an orchestration level, at a process level, we introduced Salonis on that, uh, looking at our our finance compliance processes perspective. But soon we realized that it is beyond that. It's just not about the visibility, but we could create a lot of value behind the intelligence which it brings in. And with time, uh, you know, around three years ago, we realized that, yes, that's where we need to really up the game, not look at it from a one functional perspective, but we can bring it uh, across across the enterprise. So we change our agreement with Salonis to drive it across end-to-end. -end. So today we use Salonis, uh, you know, you name it, whether it is procurement, finance, uh, you know, order to care, supply chain, sustainability, internal controls, external controls, uh, you know, you just want it to be everywhere. Completely across, I mean, we talk about taking the platform completely across the organization. That's really, that's really impressive, and I know that's music to, to Alex's ears and to the whole team here. <laughs> What are some of the benefits and, and ROI that you've been able to realize from the impact of implementing this tool so broadly? So, you know, as, as you can imagine, it's, uh, ROI is great because, uh, you know, if, if you look at I will start with the benefits first and then we'll move to ROI. Yeah. So we've been able to drive networking capital improvements a lot. Uh, that was, have been our uh, great success story at Racket. Uh, not just that, but we were able to even drive our cost to cost to serve, which is helping us to drive our P and L uh, benefits on on the on the on the books. And not just, and beyond that, we have also been able to drive our CO2 emission reduction. So those all three of them, which is a hardcore value. Beyond that, uh, which is what we do not able to measure, but it's more softer aspect is you know having the customer experience is better and 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 also the employee experience is better. So that's great. On the ROI side, I'm. I, I think from where we are today, we already announced that we are in you know, a triple digits of uh, a million, um, you know, of benefit realization. In a, you know, we are on the journey of that, and we are almost there. Triple digit millions. Yes. Just to just yeah. put that on wow. hold for a yeah. second. So we, are, we have boldly talked about it, and we uh, we are in the journey, and we are progressing well towards it. That's exciting. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Go for it. I think what. And get too excited there. <laughs> Talk about you know the, the savings and all that. What what are some of the key KPIs that you look at and, and are measuring the success that you know people who maybe are not as far down 
the cats and haven't been with Salonis as long should be, you think, should be looking at? So at top level, we look at a value KPI. We just talked about that, how each of those operational KPIs can either lead to your, you know, bottom line or top line or, or a green line now we call it. Yeah. Right, or, or the customer satisfaction or employee satisfaction, but underneath there are many, depending on where we work on. If it is supply, can we deliver products on time in full to them? Yeah, if it is if it is finance, can we make sure that how much, uh, you know, invoice can be touchless? If it is, uh, you know, if it is around the procurement, can we make sure that there are least amount of payment terms uh, in our favor, the best maximum in our favor, and we can drive the process terms improvement? And if it is, uh, you know, anything to do with CO2, we can reduce our carbon footprint. So we can, we have a different KPIs underneath to drive the top line. How, one of the things that we, and you, you mentioned this in when you were talking about all the, the positive impact that's happened across the, the company, but I'm curious because sometimes when people are, are doing process optimization, it can make employees a little uneasy because everything they're doing and all of the actions they're taking are, are being looked at and evaluated. You mentioned that employee happiness has gone up since you started doing this. What is, what is the culture around the tool internally and how have you managed to get trust and buy-in in that transparency? It was not easy, I can tell you. That's yeah. a difficult <laughs> part. I think mean, like folks can learn a lot from you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the technology is easy, but easier than the so people. It's not it. easier, <laughs> I can tell you. It's a tip of the iceberg. Technology is a tip of the iceberg. The real, real story goes behind it. 80% of the effort goes in chain management. And, right. and, and as I told, we are a 200 years old company. We have a heritage. Uh, and I know people, those who are in record from higher their, higher their age, in, you know, in record is higher than my own age, you can imagine. So, so not that I'm too young, but just to let you know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, they are resistant to change because they have done things over and over again, repeatedly in a similar fashion. And when you, when this uh, brings up that you want to change the way you want to work tomorrow, there is always a resistance. I think what has been helpful is, uh, from a technology, it's so powerful because it's a data driven. Everything is a fact. Everything is what you actually have done. You can go to the lowest level of detail to prove that this could be done better. I think uh, it was all in theory. What it helped us is we really found our friends first, who is ready to believe in it. We had our first pilot, you know, what I call lighthouse success stories. Uh, and, and, you know, we used that as a lighthouse use case to drive and have make sure that if you believe in the process mining and process intelligence to drive efficiency. I mean, it would seem, I mean, again, being a CPG company, there's supply chain on both sides. You know, raw materials in, yeah. finished product out. That, that's just massive. Yeah. I mean, it, it would seem like the things they're announcing with network and other things would be very advantageous potentially in the future for what you're doing. What do you, what do you see as the things that really have helped you move along, especially as you maybe you help data it with them or you've been a design partner? What, what, what are those types of things that you see? So just to give you a scale, we sell 30 million products on a daily basis. Huh. Yeah. yeah. So you can imagine the scale we have to work on. to work billion? Million. 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 Oh, million. Yeah. 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 Wow. No, no. Yeah. 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 Very impressive. So we touch, uh, I, I, you know, lot many consumers on a daily basis, uh, and and over the period, I think we touch, um, you know, almost a great amount of uh, people in billions. Right? So, so it means a lot of transactions. It means a lot of uh, way we have to make sure our customers are happy and our vendors are happy. So what you talked about, I think we started our journey on that uh, around a year ago. How we can collaborate and and co-share the data so that what is a challenge internally is also a challenge for our customers and, and the suppliers. So could we do something which we can be a win-win situation? Because nobody wants to find us if we are delivering on late, right? Because that's not what their KPIs are. They're not, the customers are not making money out of finding. They are really making money out of selling. So we really embark our journey how would, how would we able to work more collaboratively, share the data, integrate the challenges, and drive process intelligence along with them. I'm, I'm curious from a, from a consumer side. Mm -hmm. So I'm milling around looking for one of the many products, one of the 30 million things you're selling every single day. How has this transformation made that customer experience better? 
Yeah, so I think having the right product at the right time is, is a key, right? So uh, you you can imagine we are in the two biggest demands, uh, very demanding category. One is the Lysol and Dettol, which was very popular during COVID time. And, and second was very recently about our you know, our milk powder for the babies. So they were both in shortages at the peak of the time. So if we were able to make sure our product is on the shelves, for exactly the variety they want to make sure that they can pick up at the arm's length is what we would make our customer happy for. We have built our brands and they trust in our brands. They don't want to use different brands. So we just want to make sure that our our products are on the shelf. They are picking it up and they are utilizing the benefit and they can make themselves more healthier, better and, and more hygienic. Where, where do you see this fitting? Because you are so far down the path with Salonis and the process intelligence, where do you see AI fitting in into this picture? Well, uh, you might have uh, been seeing in the keynotes, uh, you know, the AI is not as effective if there is no PI. So, you know, there is no AI without PI. It has been a mantra. And fortunately, I just spoke about it, how we make this a difference through AI in, in my just keynote uh, right now in few, few minutes ago. So we're using that AI uh, within Salonis to drive a lot of capabilities around around the, you know, our many use cases around procurement, manufacturing, to make sure that we can drive a low downtime for our factories. We can use uh, to make sure that we can negotiate better on our payment terms or we have a less, uh, you know, the price leakages. So we've been, uh, we've been very glad to be working on AI as a finer year before, so on PI, and has, has helped us a lot in, in achieving what we want to achieve today. Are you using the Stolonis, uh uh, co-pilot, or are you building your own, or how, how are you looking at AI in that way? So if you look at it, AI can play in three, three different categories. The role. One is you can do a conversational AI, yes. which is the co-pilot piece of it. Right. The second is you can use AI to define the unstructured data to make it much more meaningful. And the third one is you can use AI as an agent who will take a decision on your behalf. So I think they come in their increasing complexity. Right, so uh, we started with our conversational AI. Uh, we did a bit more on the co-pilot, which which we have already had some small pocket of success so far. I would not say that we had a huge success on that area because models are getting trained, and we want to get make sure that everybody is confident. But it is definitely helping our community to be more interacting with the PI very quickly. So that's one. Well. But also we have done some experimentation around the unstructured data as well as some, you know, decision-making AI. That's great. That's great. And I, I think, with, what do you see as uh, what you want to tackle next as, as from a process perspective? What's, what's on your radar as, like, you're, you're going home from here and I'm, I'm excited to get into this? Well, uh, Racket is in a very interesting pivotal point where they have announced that strategically they would like to keep themselves very process-oriented. So we are heading towards uh, uh, the strategy of having end-to-end -end processes more centralized, more simplified, and, and more leaner. Uh, so which, which could not be achieved without process mining, right? So definitely we are embarking our journey to the next level. Uh, with what we have done recently is that we have also implemented their process modeling, uh, which is what they call famously CPM. It's known more for BCM, but they call it CPM. So what we are very excited about is how process mining and CPM can come play, uh, play together to define what is to be processed uh, and what it as is and how we can re remove the gaps between them. That's great. Yeah, it's exciting. So many, so many opportunities and so many SKUs. And my mind's just been thinking about all the different ways in which you can surprise and delight and save time and save money, save waste, be more sustainable, make sure things aren't getting thrown out because of an on their past their shelf day. Oodles of things. Kulip, this has been so exciting. I have one last question for you. Sure. When we have the pleasure of having you on the show again next year at Cellosphere, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say today? I think if we could uh, make our life much more simpler, uh, much more, uh, you know, synonymous in terms of, you know, driving the process excellence and to the business excellence, to the shareholder excellence, if I can quantify that in some value, that would be what I would be aspiring for. Well, we look forward to hearing you quantify that on the main stage in the keynote with a great example of how you're making and helping people live healthier, cleaner, happier lives, which I know is your, your mission statement. 
Kuldeep, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time. It was a great pleasure for me being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. And Rob, what a morning we have had. It's been exciting. It's, it's been, it's very, it's, 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 been exciting. it's been a lot of really great information. So yeah. much. I know, I, I, I feel smarter. I was almost intimidated by the brain power on this desk, and I don't say that lightly. Yeah, yeah. Very excited to hear what your favorite segment from this morning's been, wherever you might be watching. We're here in Munich, Germany, at Salona Celesphere. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Thank <music> you.